Now, Roma Wines, R-O-M-A, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. Roma Wines present... Suspense! Tonight, Roma Wines bring you Mr. Leon Ames as star of An Evening's Diversion, a suspense play produced, edited, and directed for Roma Wines by William Spear. Suspense, radio's outstanding theater of thrills, is presented for your enjoyment by Roma Wines. That's R-O-M-A, Roma Wines, those excellent California wines that can add so much pleasantness to the way you live, to your happiness and entertaining guests, to your enjoyment of everyday meals. Yes, right now a glass full would be very pleasant, as Roma Wines bring you Leon Ames in a remarkable tale of Suspense. It was literally just what the doctor had ordered. There wasn't anything in particular wrong with me, just feeling a little edgy. So I went for a routine checkup. Uh Uh-huh. Uh, how many hours a day do you work, Mr. Edwards? Well, I don't know, doctor. I never kept track. I get home for dinner very often? Not lately. Grab a sandwich at the drugstore and go on back to the office, I imagine. I've got a lot of patients like you. The ulcer type of business executive, I call you. You mean I... Oh, no, you haven't an ulcer yet. Just overwork, nervous strain. A month's vacation is what you need. But, Doctor, I yes, can't. Yes, I know my... they all say that. I tell you what you can do, though. Yes? Done wonders for some of my patients. An evening's diversion. Oh, I don't work late every night. Why, I took my wife out to dinner in the theater only last week. Oh, I don't mean that kind of diversion. Rushing home and putting on dinner clothes, fighting for a table in a restaurant, rushing onto the theater. That's work, too, I know from experience. Well, then what do you mean by an evening's diversion? Dropping into the club for a thrilling game of chess? Well, that's no good either. You wind up talking business. No, what I have in mind is something different. Huh? Go out on your own. Go someplace you wouldn't normally think of going. Then relax. See well, what happens. Now, look here, doctor. I'm a married man. <laughs> I can't... Well, then you aren't likely to get in any serious trouble. <laughs> so, that's your prescription. Oh, really, now, doctor, don't misunderstand I... me, Mr. Edwards. There's more than one kind of adventure to be found in a city this size. You'd be surprised just how many different things... Of course, I didn't take him seriously. How could I? In the first place, I didn't have time to go gallivanting around to strange places looking for trouble. And in the second place, I told myself I was too old for that sort of thing. I made a mental note to find a sensible doctor who would prescribe some pills the way a doctor should and went on back to the office. It was after five when I got there and I could have kicked myself for wasting an afternoon like that. There was a stack of briefs on my desk that I hadn't even looked at. That meant another late night. Hello. Hello, dear. It's me. Oh, hello, Lily. Uh, look, honey, I was just going to now, call... Now, Paul, you're not going to tell me you're working late again tonight. I'm afraid so, darling. Oh, dear. I suppose there's no use arguing with you. Did you see the doctor? Yes, I saw him. What did he say? Oh, the usual nonsense. Said I needed an evening's diversion. Well, he's quite right. You do. <laughs> Maybe so. Anyway, I'll be late, so don't wait up. Paul, do you absolutely have to stay at the office tonight? Absolutely. You couldn't possibly get home just a wee bit early. Not a chance. Oh, dear. What time do you think you will get home, then? Oh, 11, 11.30. Well, there's milk in the icebox if you're hungry when you get in. Thanks, honey. Good night. Good night, dear. Now, don't work too hard. I'll try not to. Yes, Mr. Edwards? Oh, I'm uh, I'm uh, working late again, Lois. Uh, I don't suppose you'd be interested in earning some more overtime. Well, frankly, not tonight, Mr. Edwards. Mm-hmm. I'd like to help out, but I've stayed every night this week, and I'm just dead. Hmm. I don't see how you do it. What do you do on your free evenings, Lois? Oh, go to the movies sometimes. Sometimes my boyfriend and I just drop in some place that looks interesting and mm-hmm. just relax and see what happens. What happens? Well, sometimes nothing. Sometimes all sorts of things. Once there was a shooting right in the place where we were sitting. Gangsters. That doesn't sound very relaxing to me. Oh, but it is. I mean, you get in a rut kind of going to the office and home again day after day. I couldn't stand it if there wasn't some excitement now and then. Uh, Well, uh, well, have a good time this evening. Thanks, Mr. Edwards. Anything you want me to do before I go? No. Good night. Oh, uh... Lois. Yes, Mr. Edwards. Uh, what was the name of that uh, place where the gangsters were? Oh, let me think. Oh, yes, Peracchino's. It's in a basement, sort of, over on Rod Street near 3rd. Hmm, that must be quite a place. Well, uh, good night again. Good night. 
After she'd gone, I opened the folder and started to read one of the briefs. But I couldn't concentrate. It was stuffy in there. So I got up and crossed the room and raised the window. I stood there for a few moments, looking out at all the vast city spread out below me. A warm breeze was blowing from across the river, bringing with it a disturbing smell of trees and damp earth that mingled with smoke and fumes and fetid air of the city and seemed to breed a kind of excitement. Well, suddenly I remembered that I had missed lunch and I was hungry. So I walked out into the corridor of the building and started toward the elevator. I hadn't bothered to get my hat. I was only going out for a sandwich. Going down. Oh, it's you, Mr. Edwards. Good evening, Joe. How's everything? Oh, you know, you know. Can't complain. Going home? No, no, just downstairs for a sandwich. Oh, man, you sure put in the hours, don't you? Oh, I don't mind. I guess your work must be pretty interesting. <laughs> man, if I didn't do something besides run this elevator and go home, I'd go nuts. Well, what else do you do? Oh, I don't know. Seems like there's always something. Just walking around the city is a heck of a good time, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> you might have something there. <laughs> yeah. Well, here you are, Mr. Edwards. Thanks, Joe. See you in... Yeah, yeah, I know. In 15 minutes. Yes, I... No. By George, I won't. I won't be back. Something in his tone of voice must have decided me. He wasn't just a fresh kid. He was really sorry for me. When I got outside on the street, that air hit me again. That warm summer air. I started walking, not paying any attention to where I was, just, just walking and enjoying that wonderful air. I must have been walking for nearly an hour before I noticed where I'd got to. It was Rod Street, and up ahead was a flickering neon sign. Peruccino. The place was bigger than I'd expected and stark empty. There were double rows of booths down the two sides of it and a high partition in the middle. In the gray overhead lighting, it looked like an abandoned stable. I was just on the point of leaving the place when a sloppy-looking waitress appeared from nowhere. Just you alone? Yes, I, uh... This way. <laughs> well, look here, it seems as if I've come in at an awkward time. Early for dinner, but you can have a sandwich. Well, all right, then. This booth all right? Yeah, fine, fine. We got ham and Swiss cheese, and that's all. That'll be fine, on rye. Both? Yes. It won't be long. I sat there watching her as she slouched down the narrow aisle of booths to the kitchen. Then she was gone, and there was nothing to look at. The silence in the place was beginning to get me. Then I heard the door open, and steps coming down the stairway from the entrance. Sitting down, I couldn't see over the top of my booth, and I didn't have the curiosity to stand up. They went down the aisle between the booths on the other side of the room. They were both men, and one had metal cleats on his heels. Yeah. The whole row of booths shook when they sat down. They were apparently rather heavy men. When they started talking, I could hear them as plainly as if they were sitting across the table from me. I told you this place would be empty. Why couldn't we talk just as well in your room? I like it here. Well, what do you want? I cut it at 50 grand. Don't rush me. What happened? Same dame double cross you? I didn't say that. All she's got to do is slip that stuff in this coffee... Why don't she do it? I'm seeing her tonight. You've been seeing her nearly every night for three months. What do you talk about? I'm doing this my own way, see? You're nuts about her, ain't you? What if I am? It's bad business. Nah, you don't understand a dame like that. It takes time with a dame like that. In the meantime, maybe she gets tired of you and spills the whole caper. That's my lookout. Oh, no, it's not, Maxie. There's me to think of, too, and the rest of the boys. Okay, okay. I'll give her the final pitch tonight. She stalls me again. You know what to do, Maxie. Yeah. Where's that slob of a hash slinger? I'm hungry. Oh, I'll buy you big feet, Maxie. Uptown afterwards. What makes you so sure I'll have to kill her? Oh, my goodness. Nothing, Maxie. Just a hunch. Come on, let's get out of here. One thing more, Maxie. Take the subway. No taxis, you hear? Oh, my goodness. Here's your sandwich. Want anything with it? Oh, no, 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 never mind. I, I've got to, to leave right away. Here, here's for the sandwich. Keep the change. I caught up with him near the corner of 7th Avenue. I knew it was him because of those metal cleats on his heels. I followed him down into the subway. He walked up to the end of the platform. I waited where I was. 
It was hot as a furnace down there. My heart was pumping fast with excitement, and I could hardly breathe. But this was doctor's orders, an evening's diversion. I walked to the far end of the platform. She didn't look around at me. When the train stopped, he went in through the center door. I went in by the door at the rear of the car. Inside the train, I saw him for the first time in a good light. He was well-dressed, almost too well-dressed. He must have felt me staring at him. He, he didn't look quite my way, but he began to jitter. He kept uh, jiggling his right leg and looking at his watch. He wound it, and then he put it to his ear. I studied him. He was more than nervous. He was worried, perhaps frightened. He uh, unfastened the top button of his shirt and loosened his tie. He looked over at me once or twice as if he knew me but couldn't place me. He uh, unbuttoned his coat and tried to relax. But I knew he couldn't relax. Not with a gun holster under his coat. For suspense, Roma Wines are bringing you a star, Leon Ames, in An Evening's Diversion. A radio play by Stan Schlesinger. Roma Wines presentation tonight in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Between the acts of Suspense, this is Truman Bradley for Roma Wines. When you finish work hot from these blistering summer days, you deserve something cool to come home to. And what could be more refreshing than the frosty luxury of Roma wine and soda, iced, America's smartest, coolest summer drink? For Roma wine and soda, so good, so cool, so refreshing, is the perfect summer thirst quencher. On a moment's notice, you can serve and enjoy Roma wine coolers, delicious as a family treat, delightful for entertaining, too. Just half fill a tumbler with Roma California Burgundy or any other fine Roma wine of your choice. Then add ice, fill with sparkling water, and stir. If you prefer a sweeter drink, simply add sugar. Presto! Your Roma wine cooler is ready to enjoy. And because Roma draws upon the world's greatest reserves of fine wines, a cooler made with Roma is bound to be better tasting. So for cool, satisfying refreshment... Enjoy Roma Wine and Soda. Insist on Roma, R-O-M-A. Remember, more Americans enjoy Roma than any other wine. And now, Roma Wines bring back to our Hollywood soundstage Leon Ames as Paul Edwards in An Evening's Diversion, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. train stopped at the 59th Street station, and he got up to leave. I followed him out of there. We got off the train, and he hurried across the dark, deserted platform. I walked slowly so he wouldn't know that he was being followed. He went to the rear of the platform and into a phone booth. His call didn't take more than three minutes, and as he came out, I thought I saw a faint smile on his lips. I flattened myself against the wall, hoping he wouldn't notice me. But he lit a cigarette and walked right over. Something I can do for you, mister? Uh, what? I said, is there something I can do for you? Uh, no, 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 that You're is... You're following I... me, aren't you? Now, see here, I don't know... Shut what up. I... What are you, a dick? What? A flat foot, a No, copper. no, 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 but I'm not... following I... me. Well, you don't know what you're talking about. You got on at 8th Street Station. You followed me when I got off here. You watched me when I went into the phone. Now you're on my tail again. What's well, a game? Maybe I'd like to play. Well, you, you play with guns. I don't. Pretty sharp guy, aren't you? Well, you must have a guilty conscience. Let's leave my conscience out of this. Just keep away from me, you understand? Keep away, you'll get hurt. Yes, I, I think I understand. I hope you do, for your sake. Now, here comes the train. I'm getting on it. If you're going uptown, you'll wait for the next one. Yes, all right. I don't want any funny business, mister. No. You'll find I've got no sense of humor. <laughs> He 
ran for the train, and as he ran, a scrap of pink-colored paper fell from his pocket to the platform. I made no move to pick it up. He was watching to make certain I didn't board the train. At last, the train started. I waited until it was out of sight. People were still clearing the platform. I was about to pick up the scrap of paper when a man hurried by and kicked it to the tracks below. I had to have that paper, so I jumped down to the tracks. There were dozens of papers down there, but only one pink-colored scrap. That was an address written on it, 375 Highland Drive. Hey, you! What do you think you're doing down there? Oh, I, I'm sorry, officer. I, I dropped an address down here, but I found it. I don't I... care if you dropped your old lady down there. You're not supposed to be down on the track. I know, officer, now but... get I... out of there, but fast. Here, grab my hand. Yes, all right. Thanks. I, I I didn't mean to break the law, but it was important that I get that paper. Hey, you're up. I ought to run you in for this. But I hope you won't. What if you was to get hit down there? You'd throw the whole train schedule off. Well, I wouldn't want to cause anyone any inconvenience. Okay, okay. But don't let it happen again. <laughs> Outside, I hailed a taxi. This time, I was lucky. I got one. Hop in, mister. Where to? 375 Highland Drive, and please hurry. Traffic is kind of heavy tonight, but I ain't got wings. I'll get you there as fast as I can. Well, I'll make it worth your while. It's a matter of life and death. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm telling you the truth. Mister, I ain't gonna argue with you, but I've been driving this hack for ten years. I've heard that song before. All right, then, don't believe me, but for the love of heaven, please hurry. Okay, okay. I'm doing the best I can. Now, it's easy for you guys to hop in a hack and say, step on it. Now, I get awful tired hearing the same things, you know what I mean? Uh, I guess you wouldn't. You look like the kind of guy who wouldn't let himself get in a rut. But not me. <laughs> Every day the same routine. Well, why why are you stopping? Red light, mister. There isn't time to stop for red lights. I've got to get to 375 Highland Drive. I've got to get there before it's too late. Relax, relax, mister. She'll wait. Oh, where was I? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, like I was saying, things get pretty dull for a hack driver. Uh, sometimes I think to myself, why not forget about it for a little while? You know, go home, get the wife, kids, go for a drive. The taxi seemed to crawl along, and the driver kept talking, talking, talking. I couldn't understand a word he was saying. His voice, the rattle of traffic, the ticketing of the meter, and the beating of my heart all blawed into one great din. It seemed that the driver made every stop sign. The cab was getting stuffy, and his voice began to feel like red-hot needles. Shut up! Huh? What? I said shut up. Oh, huh? A wise guy. Why are you stopping? There's no red light. No, there ain't. I'll shut up, okay, if you pay up and get out. Get out? You heard me. I don't like your attitude. I may not be much, but nobody walks on me. Now, get out. But I'll never get another taxi. Stop, you're breaking my heart. Oh, you fool, this is a matter of life and death. I told you that. Look, here's five dollars. Get me to 375. Mister, 500 bucks wouldn't get you to the next corner, as far as I'm concerned. Now, are you going to get out, or am I going to kick you out? Look, I'm sorry. I apologize. But please, you must get me to 375. And here's your change. Four and a half bucks. Skip the tip and get out. I've got your number. Your company will hear about this. Yeah, yeah, and I got your number, too. Now, hit the road, brother. I stood there for a moment, watching the taxi until it was out of sight. I was on Highland Drive, all right, but I was five blocks from 375. I began walking. I wondered if I would be too late. The man with the gun must be out of the subway by now. That would put him only three blocks from 375. I walked faster and faster until I was almost running. I knew I was becoming involved in something, but just how involved, I didn't know. If I had felt then like I do right now, I would have turned and walked in the other direction. As I neared the apartment house, I instinctively slowed down. Not out of fear for what was ahead of me, but was for what was behind me. I stopped. Someone was behind me. I didn't have to turn around. I knew who it was. You shouldn't have followed me here, pal. But what makes you think I don't have business of my own here? Start walking. I got a gun in your back. Where are you taking me? Start walking across the street. Don't try anything. I just as soon let you have it now as later. You're you're going to kill me? You catch on fast. But why? Why? I haven't done anything to you. I don't even know who you are. That's rough. Straight ahead. 
And we're going to take a little walk through the park. Now, listen. Listen, you let me go. I won't repeat this to the police. You, you have my word. I don't want your word. I told you not to follow me, but you did. I don't know how you did it, but you're here, and I turn right down this path. You're out of your mind. And you'll be out of your misery. Look, I've got money. I'll give you anything you... Can it. Someone's coming. Keep your trap shut. Let me do the talk. Oh, oh, say. How, how do you do? Say, do you, do you live around here? Who wants to know? Oh, I, I do. Uh, I was just wondering if you happen to know this uh, neighborhood. No. No, you, you don't. How about you, mister? You well, don't know I've... the neighborhood either. Oh, he, he do. Well, look, uh, could you tell me this much? Would, um, just a minute. Uh, 485 Highland Drive be in this direction? I said we don't know the neighborhood. Oh, you don't? Okay, well, well thank you anyway, boys. Uh, I guess I'm going in the right direction. My feet are killing Oh, uh, hey, you, uh... uh... What is it? Yes? Nothing, what? nothing. We weren't talking to you. Oh, excuse me. I thought I heard something. Very I guess. Okay. Now start walking again. Mind if I ask you something? That all depends. Just who were you going to kill tonight, other than me? Certain party in apartment 1A. What? What are you going to do about it? Oh, I was just curious, that's all. Like a cat, huh? Why were you going to kill this uh, party? This is far enough. You didn't answer my question. I'm through answering questions, pal. Look, what are you going to gain by killing me? Nothing, except my life. But I swear... Save your breath. Someone else is coming. You can't get away with this. Where the devil is all this traffic coming from? Listen. You me. listen, mister. Keep your eye on me and remember I've got this gun on you. Don't try any funny stuff like you did the last time. It's a policeman. Cop. Well, it don't make any difference to me. What I said still goes. No one can talk to me like that. I'll have you know my kid can lick your shut kid up, any old day. Don't tell me to shut up. Hey, you. what's going on here? You keep out of this, officer. Hey, take it easy, buddy. Take it easy. Now, what's with this guy? Oh, don't. Pay any attention to him, officer. He's he's nuts. Oh, nuts, is he? But I'm not a fathead like you, Flatfoot. What? Oh, he, he don't know what he's talking about, officer. He just talks a lot too much for his own good. You uh, know what I'm going to do when you go? Uh, jump in the river, I hope. I'm going up and down the street and break every window I can reach. Not while I'm around you, not. I'm taking you along with me, but just for safekeeping. Okay. Oh yeah, you and who uh, else? I'll I'll take care of him, officer. I'll take care of him. Good. Yeah. Well. All right, but you're responsible for it. Yeah. I don't want to see any broken windows, you understand? Oh, sure thing, officer. No one's going to take care of me. I'll take care of myself. Hey, hey, come back here. Come back here, I said. I don't want any broken windows, you hear? I, I ran deep into the heart of the park. I knew he wouldn't fire after me with the policeman there. I hid in the bushes for almost 20 minutes. And from time to time, I could hear his searching steps. Occasionally, he would walk slowly toward the bush I was hiding under. I was afraid to breathe, afraid to allow my heart another beat. Then for a moment, he would stop. I could, I could easily have reached out and touched him. He was that close. Then he would go, still searching. I waited five minutes more, 10, 20, a half hour. He didn't return. I knew where he had gone. I knew he was about to commit a murder. I went into the apartment house through the service entrance. My legs felt like rubber, and my clothes were torn from the bushes in the park. I walked quietly up the steps to the first floor, made sure the corridor was empty, then moved to the door of apartment 1A and listened. For a moment, I heard nothing. And then that familiar voice seeped through the crack beneath the door. So, you decided to back out, huh? Max, I'm afraid. What's there to be afraid of, sweetheart? I'm afraid for you. We'd never get away with it. Who says we wouldn't? Just let me take care of him. Or maybe you still love him, huh? I loathe him, and you know it. And why hold back? Why make yourself miserable any longer? It's you and me, sweetheart. You and me. That's the way it's got to be. I'm sorry, Max. I can't do it. I won't. You can't back out now. Why can't I? You know too much. Oh, Max, if that's what's worrying that's you... That's what's worrying me. Don't you trust me, darling. Oh, sure. When I can see you. That's why we've got to be together. Do you hear? Or maybe you want to bump them off and take all the dough for yourself. Oh, Max. Sure, that's it. Oh, what a sap I've been. Don't be a fool. I'm going. Max, I'll, I'll hear from you, won't I, darling? Not a chance. You won't be hearing from anyone, sweetheart. Max... Max, put away that gun. I'm checking you out, Lily. Max, listen, please. Listen, Max, don't do it. I'm with you. Honest, I'm with you. You, you know that, don't you? Hey, I wouldn't... let go I of my arm. Max, let go, I tell you. Be Max. careful of you. Lily. 
Max? Max! Max, darling! Max, I didn't mean to do it! Oh, I didn't mean to do it! Oh, Max! No! Her back was to me as I opened the door. She was on her knees weeping for the man she had just killed. I walked quietly toward her, knelt down, and reached for the gun at her side. Picked it up, moved a few steps back, and waited. She must have felt my presence in the room because she stopped sobbing, stood up, and turned to face me. Nothing was said. Her eyes were searching mine, growing wider and wider as she found my thoughts. Tiny streams of blood began to trickle from those places where her sharp fingernails had penetrated the palm of her hand. The silence of the room began to roar. And then... Get me the police department. Police department. You'd better send someone over to 375 Highland Drive right away. Apartment 1A. 375 Highland Drive, apartment 1A, huh? What's up? I, uh... I think you'll call it murder. I just killed my wife. Suspense. Presented by Roma Wines, R-O-M-A. Made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. Before we hear again from Leon Ames, the star of an evening's diversion, tonight's suspense play. This is Truman Bradley for Roma Wines. The 4th of July marks not only Independence Day, but also the beginning of the really hot summer weather. The sweltering, throat-parching days that melt your energy and burn your disposition. Well, here's a clever California recipe that's famous as a heat beater. To get cool, comfortable, and contented... Enjoy an ice-cold, taste-tingling Roma Wine Lemonade. That's right, Roma Wine Lemonade. Delicious, refreshing, inexpensive. Here's how. Place ice and the juice of half a lemon in a tall glass. Pour three-quarters full with zestful Roma California Burgundy, or any other Roma wine you prefer. Add water and sweeten to taste. Then sit back and sip your way to cool contentment. Roma Wine Lemonade, the most refreshing summer drink you ever tasted. So cool to come home to. And remember, Roma, America's favorite wine, makes America's finest wine coolers. So refresh with Roma, R-O-M-A, Roma Wines, America's first choice in wine. And this is Leon Ames. I hope you've had a pleasant Fourth of July. I know that for me it's been an exciting holiday to appear here on Suspense. Next Thursday, I'm sure you'll want to listen when a very wonderful actor, Sheldon Leonard, appears in a suspense play called The Feast of the Furies, in which Mr. Spear has just described to me and which sounds like one of the really dramatic events of the radio season. Leon Ames appeared through courtesy of Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of the Technicolor musical Easy to Wed. Next Thursday, same time, Roma Wines will bring you Sheldon Leonard as star of Suspense, radio's outstanding theater of thrills. Produced by William Spear for the Roma Wine Company of Fresno, California. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.